six simple steps of mixed media canvas. I really hope this was helpful, inspirational, uh, needed and uh, something that you really really can relate to and use in your projects. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Marta here. How are you? I'm super happy that you are here with me tonight because I have very special video. Process of mixed media canvas. Where to begin? What to use? How to choose things? What's the process? I'm gonna break it down to you in six simple steps. And those steps are gonna be perfect for most, if not all, mixed media projects that you are about to attempt. So I hope you will stay with me because uh, this is something that I think it's gonna be helpful, something you can always look forward, look back to it and use it in case you are not gonna be so sure what to do next. Where to begin so? My number one uh, in the process of mixed media is what to create. You have to decide what project you're gonna make. I have here, as you can see, few pieces. You can make your mixed media project on a canvas. That's probably one of the most common one. You can go for this side of mixed media canvas, also this one. Gather your supplies, so decide for what you're gonna use. Wooden panel, why not? You can use and work on your wooden panel. Wooden element, surely this could be your base, fantastic. You can make mixed media on top of your book to create a beautiful journal book. You can also use canvas like this, which is like a very flat one, or work on a cardboard if you don't have any professional, let's call it, supplies. So gathering your supplies and choosing what would you like to really create is number one. Start off from deciding what you're gonna create. I'm gonna go for this canvas today. So let's get the rest to result. Choosing your art supplies, deciding about the project you wish to make, it's your number one in the creative process. You have to have some kind of base, some kind of beginning, so you know which direction, what kind of shape your project is going to take, which direction your creative process is going to go. So pick a few items. You can always change your mind, change your mind about the color, change your mind about the products you're going to use, or maybe add something, maybe change, swap it, that's fine but have some kind of base, some little, like, tiny idea of what kind of project you have in mind. So let's start. After choosing our canvas as our base and have few products, it's time for action. Let's do it. Mm, I have some colors here on hand, but I can change them always. I wish to maybe make something pretty simple. So butterfly always works great. If you're not so sure, if you're a beginner, Butterfly is always a great focal point, always, always. And I have some from here, Tim Holtz, a mix of different butterflies. We're gonna see what, you, what I'm gonna go for. I love adding some kind of embellishments to my canvases. So beautiful uh, elements like resins, frames, chipboards. Oh, I'm gonna grab some chipboards. Lace as well and texture paste. So my number two for a, a next step once we have all the supplies is that you have to create your text Texture, build a composition and have a think of what sort of shape this project is gonna have. So let's open our canvas to begin with. <laughs> I'm going for a small canvas and I advise you to start small guys. Then you don't always have to, you don't have to have um, tons of supplies in hand because uh, the project is so big that wow I just need this and I just need that and no, start with something small and simple, yet simple, pretty, can be pretty easy, simple things can be really pretty. So that's what I have, I'm thinking that it's going to be perfect for my square canvas. But just to going back, I'm going to show it to you quickly. Look, technically, if you really wish to use it on a base like that, you surely could do that too. Look, you surely can, actually, why, do <laughs> why don't we do it? Why don't we? No, no, this time I'm gonna go for it, but you could do that. Look, you can also, if you really wish to decorate your notebook, you can decorate your notebook as well with it. You can do exactly the same thing on the panel. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that it's about your own decision, what kind of project you wish to make, 
how many supplies you have in hand, how much time you have, what abilities. Start small, simple, with less supplies. Don't get overwhelmed with things. Don't choose 20 million things. Go for something small and simple, guys. So, we need to make a texture to create our base and our composition. So I'm gonna put those things aside and the paperish kind of things are definitely for my last moment colors as well. So we're starting with some basics. Let's choose some pretty pretty um, stencil uh, which I'm gonna go for. I want there which could be awesome for this project. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm gonna go for this one. It's pretty simple. When you're choosing your um, when you're choosing your um, elements uh, to, as in products, go for simple. Don't go like take basic things, basic shapes like circles, squares. Those things always works. The magic and it's good. So I'm not. Uh, you can prime your project, pro project of course, your canvas if you wish. You don't have to prime or not. It's it's up to yourself. Both will work. Uh, I'm not gonna prime it actually. I'm gonna this time just have a texture play. Now to to, to for your texture you can use uh, texture paste, uh, 3D paste, any sort of um, structural paste. You can use heavy gesso if you have. My one is heavy gesso actually. And let me just get my stencil here. I'm gonna go for very much on the side here. This is actually stencil from my shop that I have designed. So if you wish to have a look at my shop as well, please feel free to have a look. Um, a lot of supplies that I will be using you can get in scrapbook.com. So link is as well. I'm gonna go for maybe... Oh no, I'm gonna just do it like that. Um, a lot of don't, like um, Tim Holtz things, Prima, would be in the scrapbook, so please have a look in the description box. I'm gonna have it there as well. Beautiful! I'm gi I'll give you the link as well there. So now we have used spatula for our mo uh, modeling paste for our texture for our stencil but you can also use if you don't have it you can use try to use ruler maybe or a credit card I can't see it here I don't have it but yeah you can of course use that now how else can we make it interesting how else can we make it um, textury lace a little bit of string sure why not <laughs> One of the ways that you can add your elements is using 3D gel medium. I highly recommend you that. Any sort of gel medium, uh, hard um, gel medium would work. Uh, as in hard, as in 3D gel medium. Now where I'm gonna place this? Have a think. Now if I will be having this here maybe, then lace really can be anywhere if you think about it. Literally anywhere. So I'm gonna just go for anywhere way uh, and I'm thinking to maybe just go with that gel medium here on my desk I'll tell you why I just really wish to kind of preserve in a way it's not gonna be seen but in a way I'm gonna preserve the gel medium the modeling paste here the triangles but on the other hand I wish this to squeeze in in between my lace so you will see for yourself what I mean so let's see, awesome, actually you can even make it not so even, yay why not, not so even as well, <clears throat> so I'm gently tapping so I hope that this as you can see my triangles are peeking through because they are still wet and I love that, great, now you can maybe decide for a little bit on the side to go for a little bit of that <clears throat> here on the side and same for this one <laughs> so this is our number two so we're building our composition we're building our texture we're building our interest that's your number uh, two sorry that's your number two step about your canvas so that's what we have we have our background but also why not to be courageous a little bit more and add even this sort of lace. 
I would like that. Would you like that? I hope you do. Now, I think one of the biggest enemies regards us crafters, creators, artists is the fact that we are sometimes afraid to start. We're afraid that we're gonna destroy our products, use them. Uh, look, just go for it. If it's not gonna be perfect the first go, the first glance, maybe it's gonna be perfect next time. You know, just go for it. Just try. Just enjoy the process. The mixed media is not that difficult as it seems, as it looks. Honestly, you can do it. Everyone can do mixed media. If I can do it, sure, why not? You have tons of videos out there. Look for those. Look around what's there. There we go. So we have our pretty, pretty canvas. Um, as in, go underneath it. <laughs> we have our pretty, pretty canvas as in um, texture background and our composition starting to have a little bit of play. Now I'm gonna go for a little bit of more happenings here, which I'm thinking to add some string and I'm just gonna go for like maybe this sort of, there we go. It's already pretty pretty. Now, <clears throat> now this is not necessarily guys. This is only, you know, however feels good for you. <clears throat> I just wish for a little bit extra interest. So I have a little bit more there happening, but there we go. Let me get my hot glue. I wonder if it's already on. It is on. So I hope it's going to work out a little bit because, <laughs> there we go, I think that's okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to just cut that excess, there we go, done, and voila, how absolutely pretty is that. So we have our elements nearly glued down, I'm going to go for, where's my spatula, my my silicone spatula that Hannah took <laughs> only recently, my gift that I received. Anyway, next step is to glue down your element, this one. And for those 3D elements, all kinds of 3D elements, you need hmm, pretty a lot of gel medium, I have to say. Mm, one more thing actually came to my mind. I have those chipboards in the store. Why don't we just use some kind of chipboard there? Let's see. Oh, honeycomb, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what else is there. Honeycomb or... I'm gonna show you them all. <gasps> Maybe... No, I think the honeycomb could work lovely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just literally rip it apart. I'm not gonna glue it down all as it is. Because... No, because I would like some interest happening there. So I'm gonna... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just rip it like that. Sure. That's, yeah, there we go. <gasps> How about this? Oh, lovely, jovely. What about if I'll go for this sort of, oh, nice, or a little bit too heavy wish. Maybe if I'll swap this with that. There we go, much nicer. So I hope that this will catch up a little bit of that gel medium here and there, here and there, in places. So again, you can choose whatever you like for your backgrounds, your elements, you can use buttons, you can use um, stones, you can use cardboard, you can use anything you really wish you have. You use what you have, literally. There we go. Same for here. I'm gonna add a bit more gel medium here because I don't have any uh, more texture there. My white texture is under the, the lace. So now, there we go. Mm -hmm. Hannah is asleep. I can hear. Oh, Lucas is coming. So yes, <laughs> another victory. The baby is gone to bed. Great. 
<laughs> and we can do a little bit of crafting. Um, sure, why not like that? I like it like this. There we go. Great. Now, there's more chipboards in the store if you wish for some. So feel free to check it out. All the links for the products and interesting stuff are in the description box, uh, description below the video. If you're watching on TV, I, I think it's pretty impossible, I think, to go into the description box. And also it's hard to leave the comment, so you need to go on your iPad or phone or computer, something like that, you know? So, we are still at number two, guys, doing our mixed media. And this one is pretty simple project, I hope you can see. You can seriously adapt all these uh, into your own way of uh, feeling for your mixed media. It's only guidelines, it's only a few ideas, but they are working magic most of the time with all the projects. So you can use these techniques to every... I use this kind of way always, always. So. There we go. <clears throat> do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit more gel medium, actually w way more, because I really wish this to go a lot of underneath it in between the grooves of that uh, chipboard as well. So a lot, a lot. And, oops. And I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. <laughs> so, oops. No. Two seconds, maybe I'm gonna add it there. Now, there we go. Very nice. And imagine this will be maybe, I'm not too sure, going there in the middle. Maybe, maybe not. We will see. Maybe not. Maybe here. Oh, cute. Cute. So let's dry that all. And once this is dry, we're gonna move on to number three. Step number three is making sure that you will dry the whole canvas, that nothing is moving and that you prime your project for further work. That means start applying white or black or transparent gesso. So whatever works for you. Um, the truth is I'm using very bright elements. This is what I went for. That's what I love the most It's much easier afterwards to work with those But you can cover up anything with white gesso or black gesso if your elements are colorful Definitely use your primer your gesso the reason we are coloring everything in one color is that we blend in everything and preparing uh, the whole piece for further coloring. So this is a very important part and also some things may not hold the color properly, may not hold the medium properly depending on the medium as well. So priming it with white gesso, transparent gesso or black gesso, it's a key element in the process. You have to remember that plus it's really up to yourself what colors you're gonna go for. If you're gonna go for white gesso, your project usually will turn um, brighter uh, because you will probably work with brighter colors and um, you are using different types of mediums uh, between black and white uh, gesso. There are a few differences if you're using waxes, if you're using acrylic paints. So you really have to see for yourself I have a video like this when I have working on black gesso and white gesso together. I may try to find it and link it to you as well so you can see the comparison. But this is our step number three, very important one. Making sure that you prime your project for further work and using white gesso or transparent or black. I'm using white gesso so that all of my elements are covered nicely and I can move on and start with point number four which is adding color deciding for the color for my whole project so uh, color that with white uh, to cover all the elements and dry so i'm gonna dry that and get back to you so we can start adding the colors 
Once your canvas is dry, it's time to use some colors and decide for what kind of mediums you would like to use. Did you know that it doesn't matter what kind of mediums you are gonna use because you are allowed to use whatever you have, whatever works best for you, whatever you like. You can go for watercolors, it's a different effect, but you can use it. You can use uh, acrylic paints, you can use sprays, whatever works for you. You can use waxes, you can use Inca Gold, whatever you have. Try for yourself, what would you like to use? I'm gonna show you just quickly all of these, just to see the difference between them. I'm gonna add some color, some water to my watercolors, and I'm gonna get some watercolor brush, let's say maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna start with coloring green. Would you like to see green? Why not? So you can really go for even watercolor effect. You can add some water there, just if you feel like it. So you can certainly go for even coloring your mixed media project with watercolors. These are gouaches actually, but you have to remember as well that effect will be different. For example, it's much lighter, um, you will use different way of coloring, but you are simply allowed. Now then you have sprays. You can definitely go for just direct spray like that. Awesome, pretty, no problem. Or you can just use your acrylic paint and just go for that for example like here and just go for you know acrylic color happening so we have a mix of everything right now and that's perfectly fine you know you can seriously use what you have what you can afford what you like to use maybe what you wish to get rid of <laughs> in a way you know it's up to yourself and different kind of techniques you need to apply regards different mediums but as you can see look I'm using at this moment now the, the acrylic paints you know that they dry permanent so once they dry you cannot move them watercolors you can move them with color uh, with water sorry no problem sprays as well these are water based so you can move the color whenever you add some water and spray on top of the spray uh, with the water so Every medium is different, but you have to learn your mediums, but there's no mistakes. There's no such a thing as this is the best, this is what you have to use. No. Mm, the technique I'm showing you is going to apply to most of the mixed media projects you wish to use, and this is kind of the way I see mixed media process, but there is so many processes depending on the artist, there are so many ways that you can actually use your products and every artist has a different kind of uh, work, uh, kind of work uh, pr process, work system, you know? So it's really down to your own preferences. I'm gonna get some water here and I will, I think, show you that I can use both and watercolors and acrylics and sprays at the same time. Oh, the alarm. <laughs> the alarm for going to school to pick up Emily, but Lucas ha managed to put Hannah to bed on time, so he's gonna go for um, Emily. Look, you can use, look, you can use all the mediums, sorry, this is my other phone, the one that broke down. Um, and the alarm is also on there. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we have. Which color I've used? I think, no, which color I've used? I think this one, did I use this? No, not this one, maybe this one? No, no, this one. Which color I've used? Maybe this one? Yeah, I've used this one, I love it. I think it's very pretty. So let's keep it. Now, at some point you need to decide for drying it. Let me turn off the... I semi-dried just a little bit. My canvas. You can use heat tool. You can also use a hair dryer. Did you know that? And I was thinking to add a little bit more, a little dark, because I like dark. Because I like the effect that in the grooves the dark is making here, in this frame. So I'm gonna add a little bit of dark. As you can see, I'm not going directly spraying with my spray because it would go everywhere and I don't like that I wouldn't like that so you can use this like this pipette thing or you can use just a brush fine um so whatever makes you I don't like that so I can just wipe that off a little bit I may just leave it without that black isn't it 
so I'm using it as you can see <coughs> directly from the from the from the um, bottle but be very careful guys because I've seen oftentimes that the bottle slip through your from your hands and goes down on the project so be very careful about it I think it's lovely like that so I'm gonna dry this a little bit because my um, inks were moving when I was drying you can see that this black kind of faded and it's more green because it's kind of mixed up with the rest of it which is beautiful and I like that actually I don't mind that so I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more my canvas is dry but I really wish to go for a little bit different color as well I got a gift of our caravel inks from my friend Betty and she sent me those inks and look at that I think this could go so nicely there so I'm gonna get my sponge I have some sponges here and I'm gonna see if I can actually maybe add a little bit of a, oh, a little bit of that color here oh, look. so you can also as you can tell use your inks whatever you have around you so we're gonna make this a little bit more green. Why not? Why not? Oh, look at that. So... There we go. I love it. I'm gonna mute it down as well. Slightly, maybe with that grey color. So let's see if I can actually mute it down slightly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now remember that your final look is going to be even different because we're going to do one of the steps which is dry gesso ink which I will talk about it in a minute once we have our coloring kind of done and dusted and we are happy with it. Coloring is something that it takes time guys, honestly. It takes a little bit of learning to really properly color, to be happy with it, but it takes time to practice, you need practice, you really do need a little bit of practice to be happy with it, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really, um, what's the word, um, I wouldn't really feel um, sad about the fact that things are not working properly because it's years of practice and I just have to try it once and don't get intimidated don't get overwhelmed with a little bit of um, a little bit of that things are not working that's okay you know that's okay they will work next time I love it I think it's really beautiful and I'm gonna do the kind of like a little bit of like this kind of framey look darker and brighter a little bit but kind of everywhere I think it's gorgeous gorgeous and it's different to, to, to my usual coloring so I love it I love the gray actually because it's not dark it's not black it's not killing the color it's like helping me to build up the 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 uh, layers of color and I like that so gray is a good choice I think actually this one was great too uh, oh it's not close be careful this one is um, Anyway, it's greyish. It's called iced spruce, <laughs> uh, but it's grey, greyish. Okay, now we need this to dry completely. I think I'm very happy with the coloring at this moment, at least in, at this moment. So let's dry this, and once we dry it, I'm gonna go back to you. And I just wonder if I can add slightly more of that orangey touch. I think so, isn't it? Just a little bit. I like that. Okay, let's dry it completely. And once it's dry, we can start gessoing. Number five of our point is once your color is done, dry and gesso. So number five is dry and gesso and I'm gonna do it now. 
as I said, our number five is dry and just so once everything is dry, but remember, please do, it has to be completely dry. If it's not going to be dry, especially sprays like that, watercolors, you will end up with cross domination of color and water and, and gesso, and gesso will react with the color because gesso is water based as well. So I really suggest you to have everything really dry. So leave it maybe till the next day or a few hours or really, really concentrate on drying it properly. Uh, um, because if it's not going to be dry, as I said, you're going to smudge it and muck it and it's not going to be great. So, where do we begin? First of all, your gesso should be really nice and thickish kind of gesso. You can make home homemade gesso, did you know that? You can make your own gesso. There is a recipe on my, uh, on my channel. If not, there is texture paste which you can dilute and treat it as a gesso. I may do a video on that actually soon, that's a good idea. Um, where do we begin? First of all, you need your gesso to be, you know, all over your brush. And I'm using cover of my, cover for my uh, jar. And I'm starting from the brightest point, which is here, as you can tell, which is here, as you can tell, a little bit of there, there, but definitely here. Now, flick in motion to dry gesso it, and why do we dry gesso it? We just really wish to, the elements of the texture, all these pretty, pretty textury uh, pieces to be more visible, to make it depth, to make it more kind of, um, I don't know, like a light look and detailed look and all these details to come out. So flick in motion, you're not doing this, you're not gonna be doing that too much. Well, yes, but to start off, make a flip, flick, flicking, like, like gently like look you can even hear it so that way you're just touching the really really top surface rather than rather than going deep you know oh, if some elements fall off that's okay <laughs> you can even hear it isn't it and I'm concentrating on making sure that my flicking thing goes the most on those the most higher elements so you know we need to make sure that we wish to make sure that texture is more visible so our our um what's the word our um chipboard our st um, lace our um string as well you know and all these gorgeous elements on our for example on our um frame so I'm dipping more just so can you see how it's changing already so once the color is there once you have your canvas dry or your project dry just so it's really final touch it's really your help towards building the interest for your project now another good idea if it's not working great you can use your heat tool and oops sorry and you can to hit at the same time as gessoing. So this way you're not gonna be having too much of, as I said, color contamination with gesso. So you can literally heat it up while you're adding the white. Now, you can add it anywhere on your project as you can see, but I'd be definitely concentrating more on that absolutely gorgeous frame. By the way, all the products you can find links to, to it in the description box. So please free, feel free to check it out. I'll try to give you links if I can. <laughs> wow! What do you think? Our heart as well. I, I'm still not too sure if I will add my butterfly. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's definitely... Now after drying gesso is stop being so white so that's why adding layer after layer after layer is good it's good same for here I wish to add oops that's too much but that's okay you see even if you added a bit too much of the dark color you can kill it with white and help it out you know so I think I'm very happy the way as it is now and I don't think I'll be changing much here and adding more because I think it's absolutely stunning as it is I may just go a little bit on those sides of my canvas and just have it like that Wow what you think? 
what you think. So we have our number five done. Last step is left. We have our color and judge right, just sewing and, and drawing and all. And time to add some maybe focal points, some embellishments, some elements. I don't really feel that this works at this moment with the coloring, so I'm gonna just pause the video and find something else. I think I found it. I have this gorgeous, gorgeous spread your wings, which matches those wings which are here. Those are Tim Holtz transparent wings and those stickers are actually from Seven Dots. So let me just get those. I think it's gonna be just beautiful. So we're gonna still have our, or here. Well, it could be here. No. Uh, we still have our gorgeous, totally gorgeous uh, heart visible and everything. So I'm gonna just get my hot glue. Now, one thing I maybe didn't mention, why didn't I use hot glue gun? Oh. I, I need glue. <laughs> Why didn't I use my hot glue gun when I was adding my elements? Well, the best is gel medium, 3D gel medium, anything like that, because hot glue is flexible, it's not flexible after drying, so elements may just simply fall off. So for adding heavy elements like that, building your, um, your, building your, um, building your composition, I would highly suggest to use um, basically gel medium and not hot glue gun in this matter. Okay. I don't know where is this gonna go, but I'm gonna try it somewhere like that. Oh, it's hot. I need to be very careful. I love it. Spread your wings. Now. Ha. That's our number six, adding embellishments and final touches and what would you like. And you can also add maybe splashes if you feel like it, but really technically this would be, this would be our finished piece, our mixed media canvas in six steps. So uh, here it is, I really hope you found it inspirational and if you did please do let me know what you think would you like to see more simplified videos like that i would definitely wish to hear from you and most definitely you would make a, a huge difference if you would share this video with your friends six simple steps of mixed media canvas i really hope this was helpful inspirational uh, needed and uh, something that you really really can relate to and use in your projects so thank you so much for watching i'm gonna wrap up at that hoping you will Tag me in your projects as well if you make it and if you find it helpful. Save it to your playlist on YouTube because that way you will find it later on. Share it on Pinterest, on Facebook, jump in on the Facebook page of mine and you can share it from there. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. I couldn't do it without you so thank you, thank you so much for being here as always. A pleasure to be in your homes. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye! Bye bye!